at the work that people like Danny do and uh, the other guys in the root building teams. However, um, right, so I am just going to, because uh, I can't show menus, just what you're doing, what you're going to know, I'm creating a new route with a temp ground texture set of Riviera Line in the 50s, um, creating the name and just hit create and then I'm going to find it and hit edit. Right, so, model railways. Uh, Majestic dog face, that really helps. Excellent, I'm glad that really helps. Uh, Bushy the Toff, now I've got two more scenarios after this tutorial. Uh, the aim is to run till about 11 o'clock-ish. Okay, so, route building. Oh, yeah. So one of the things that people I think like to do is a very simple, um, a simple task, if you like, for model rail is, is to build a model railway. So over here in the bottom left, in the left hand side, I've taken. I've normally, if you haven't done um, done this before, they will all be tucked away. So pull them all out and tick on them to make them stay out. Um, then what I would suggest is useful is if you tick that box so that you can see where all the tile grid lines are, tick that box and you can see the terrain mark. So this is where all the terrain is. So when you want to know where the terrain points are, you can only move these points. Yeah, that's the resolution of the terrain. So if you, if you were to put your track along that line, then you'd have to leave all of that flat. Otherwise it would um, cover up the track. So you can use that as a good guideline anyway. Um, what I'll do rather than closing the cameras because that's that's just messy. I'll just shrink the the, uh, the camera like that, and let me move. I will get rid of the gauge though because that one does no value to that. There you go. Now you can see everything I can see. Um, so can I close all the side panels? Hang on a second. Then that one's gone. Get rid of that one. Um, leave that one on. Get rid of that one. And get rid of those two for the time being. Right. Okay. That's kind of got them off the screen. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of my camera as well. You don't need to see me. And then I can go ahead and make. Oh, I've got to put all these back on again. <laughs> all right. Let me make that bit bigger. And what I'm going to do is... I'm not going to fill the top bit. Let's just put it to there. That'll do. Right, let's get on with it. Oh, that one's there as well. Right, there you go. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Bushy the Toff. Right, so if I do track and um, one second, and uh, remember, whenever you're going to lay route, uh, lay track, make sure you use this one here, the track route, track rule current, because if when you click that, nothing shows up here. Then track isn't going to work properly. You need it means that a rule isn't set. So if even if it says something set, just click the drop down box, click the button, and stuff will appear up here. So I'm going to pick a track rule now. And the first thing we're going to do um, uh, is uh, just put a straight line down like that. Now, the next thing I'll do is if I switch it to yard, just so that we can do some nice tight curves. Like that. Now, if I'd measured that other one, I could have got this spot on. But because I didn't measure it, I'm going to do use the guesswork approach, which is about there. And then I'm going to put this round to there. Nope. 
that didn't quite match. See, I've got the length of it just not quite right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, bring that round to about there. I'm doing this as a maximum radius curve just to make my life a bit easier. Now, the question is, how do you join this up? Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, because that's always the difficult bit. Because you've got to, in theory, you want to make these things so that I'm, I'm using my hands here and gesticulating and you can't see it. <laughs> um, so if I just push this back here, um, and then I redo the track here. You do need to keep making sure you select yard. If you select yard, you get much tighter radius is one of the benefits of it. So around here now, I should be able to, um, if I'm lucky. Why well, you're not playing ball. I think it's because I actually... I haven't gone far enough. Right, so. Trying to work out what I've done wrong here. <laughs> you know when you practice something before the stream and uh, everything works fine? Oh, I wonder if it's because that's a yard uh, mainline type. Let's get rid of that bit of straight track. And I made that yeah, a main line. I don't know if you can join two different types together. Well, you must be able to, but never mind. So let's put yard there. And extend that all the way past where I need it. Is that the magnet? Yeah, snap to track. Well, that's just ridiculous. Why are you not snapping? You can join them. You don't need to have snap to track on because that's what the control and shift keys do. Uh, oh, sorry, I think it's control. You don't need to have um, the uh, that on. Whoops. Right, let's get rid of that curve. <laughs> Switch that. I'm going to leave that back open. Change that to yard. Pro root builder. Yeah, no. This is why I don't do root building tutorials usually. So stop asking me for them because they never work. <laughs> Well, that didn't work, did it? That didn't work. You can let me bold it. Oh, look at that. What a disaster. That's a total disaster. I'm trying to work out what I've done differently to the one I did before. I would load that, but unfortunately I did something and totally crashed the route where that route will no longer even load without crashing the game. So again, this is why I don't do route tutorials. Right. No, it's not doing it. Even with snap to track on, it's not working. Make it slightly bigger. Yeah. Okay. Let's move that. I think what happened was I actually might have not done this as a full curve last time. Let me try doing this one more time. We come round here. Yard. So I'm going to sort of go round to there. I'm not pulling it to a full tight curve this time. Put it round to about there. Round to about there.
there you go so by hustling the control key it will snap automatically if it can find a join so it's just because it was uh, it was i think it was so tight it wouldn't actually fit but because i'm not using the full radius it's now actually worked so now what you do is you click that and get rid of it uh, and you weld that and then you've got a full loop so if you really if you if you want to you could now go to scenery signals and if we put a destination marker in there if you find that you can't see these by the way click on the monitor in the top left and tick these six yeah what you might find is when you place markers you notice how it's gone away if you find when you place markers you do oh this looks really good uh place a marker and that happens and then when i click away it's gone where's the marker oh no panic panic um click to show all of the markers and then you can find them again and there's that one so let's put that in there i'm going to put another marker over here i'm going to put another marker over Ooh, no, don't do that that's bad um put another marker there and i'm going to put another marker there now i'm going to go into scenario mode Right, if we now place a train, I'm just going to use a pannier and some coaches because it works. Works better if I actually place them on the track. There you go. Uh, driver icon on there. And let's put the. Uh, I'm going to leave it as an AI train. So now what we do is I'm going to do one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six five six seven and stop right so that is destination four that is destination two that would be destination three destination one destination four i'm doing it this way so i've got more more nodes in here because otherwise if i did it from there to there it might go backwards and then go like this so by putting extra nodes in, I'm going to get more. I'm going to make sure it goes the way I want it to. Two. Uh, three. Come on. Thank you. And then stop at one. So it's going to go around the loop twice. Tip. You can see it's filled it in. He it reckons it will take three minutes to do it as well. Left it as an AI train. If I press play. And there we go. So that's a loop of track. The other one I thought that might be interesting to have a look at is a figure eight that goes over the top. I'm using my hands again. Uh, a figure eight that goes over the top. Just let that train run around for a minute, just to prove it does. Yes, you should always quit and reload if you've got signals. If you haven't got signals, then... There you go, that's a loop of track, all working fine. You should always put super elevation on curves and all sorts of things. So that's that. Right, let's do a figure eight, because you know that went so well we should do a figure eight. So if I move over here, 
and I'm going to re-tick that so I get the I can see the terrain grid. And this is where we see some of the terrain stuff I was talking about earlier on as well. So let's first start off by getting all the track down <clears throat> for a figure eight. Put a nice big long straight in. I forgot to change that to yard. And then I'm going to come round. And then I'm going to come round to about there and put a straight in. Again, if you're being a bit more scientific than this, you would probably, um, you know, make it even. But then no railways were really even, were they? So I'm holding the control key down again. That's completing the, that's doing the join for me. So having done the join, get rid of the track and re-weld it. We now have our loop, like so. So now we've got a loop in a figure eight. What we need to do is fix this. Now you could make this a square diameter, a square crossing. Um, and um, it's uh, it's that was one way of doing it, but I thought it'd be more fun if we actually made it um, uh, go up and over the top, like you know, everyone, all of us did. So I'm going to put, I'm using this gradient tool up here to put a gradient marker in. So if I put gradient marker in at either side, and I'm also going to put a marker around here somewhere. So the idea is it will start climbing here and finish climbing here, be level across here come all the way down and when it gets to about there it'll be finished climbing again so now what i can do is i'm just going to move these markers very carefully be very very careful with these markers because if you put you can make all do all sorts of bad things with your route if you move these markers incorrectly right so i'm going to lift this up and i'm going to lift this up just make sure it's snapped onto it right so that's made that. Now you notice it always lifts between markers. So even though I've got that one in there, it's ignored it. That's fine. I'm going to use the smoothing group later. Remove unused markers with delete. Yes, Scott, plop them out. You certainly can. If you, uh, if I go over here, I've got a marker. If I put a marker in there, if I hover over it and just hit delete, it's gone. Um, so that's put that in, but it'd be nice if that wasn't just a silly height. We should make it something sensible. So if we switch into first local scenario mode, Right, there's my loop, there's my uh, other one over here. So in here, well, let's put um, a break down. That'll do. Let's put one on either side as well, just to make sure we've got it covered. And so what we wanna do is make sure the track will go over it. Then the next thing we wanna do is come out of here And we need to find a bridge. So I was thinking that I would use that one. You think that's about right? <laughs> turn it around. Press hold and turn around. And then that will get you the, uh, the bridge will spin into place. So that looks reasonable, slightly on the wonk. That's it. Move that into place. Right, we've got the bridge in roughly the right place. Uh, it's not in the right place that way, so slide it over. So we now know where the track needs to go in order to pro properly um, cross over the uh, the train. So it's in the right place left and right. Now I can fix the uh, the track. Go back into the gradient tool, and again, this is a little bit of um, uh, fiddling around. just until you find the right balance point. If you know how tall that bridge is, obviously that makes life considerably easier. All right, you press the shift key, you can move it slowly. So that will do. That's placed the bridge on um, and we've now got that. So the next thing to do is to smooth this hill. So we know that the hill is, we can quite clearly see from 
from there where the hill stops. So I want to put uh, a marker from there to around about there. And then what I'm going to do is click this one here that says smooth. So if I click that now, you'll notice that that has become a lovely smooth gradient. It's no umps and bumps and jumps in there at all. So other like this one, which is, you know, pretty much the opposite of a smooth gradient. So if I now click this and move around to about there, click smooth, right click, and we've got a nice smooth gradient over here. So we now have the makings of our nice runnable track. When did that get in there? What's that, Stephen Jam? What didn't you know about? Right, so before we run a test on it, let's get some terrain in. I just want to show you the implicate, what this, this grid here actually means so that you can see it for real. Um, so what I'm going to do is use the snap tool. Uh, I've got it set to a radius of 20, and as I snap it, it's raising the terrain up um, quite coarsely um, to around about uh, where the track is. kind of works, but actually I'm going to have a problem here. You can see I'm going to have a problem here, can't you? And I'm not necessarily going to solve it because, again, it's not a root builder. But I will show you what the problem is and why it happens. So what we've got here is we want to actually bury some of this up here. Now, it looks like I have just about strategically managed to place everything in the right places. So what you can do is you can manually lift or lower terrain. So you can do like that, which will very slowly. Let's change the, is that the speed. Yes, yeah, so if I change the speed to say two, um, you can see that it's moving the terrain around where I'm lifting up. You've got lower, which you can use to, to lower terrain. Again, it's set quite slow. Let's set that to five. So you can lower the terrain around, around that area there if you want to. What I find, and what uh, and certainly a lot of the root team find very helpful, is this this one here, which is just height. If I set that to something very small, it, I can use it to just pick one point up and move it up and down. In theory. Oh, there you go. Look, there's the point. So I can move single points up and down. Which can help you um, refine your um your terrain now you can see that that's brought the terrain up to uh the track which is probably not what i wanted to do so again that's probably going to be quite hard to solve let's see what i can do with this one Right, again, we're going to have a problem there because there's just not enough resolution in the terrain. And there's not a lot you can do about that. The, 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 you can see the grid that I'm moving. It shows up there. So let me hide that other one. When I press down on this tool, you can see the grid that we're moving up and down. And there's not a lot you can do to really help that. It really is. That's, that is the terrain grid. Uh, and you can't change it. So when you're having problems laying hills and you don't want it to decimate the terrain, um then that's kind of your problem <clears throat> so the solution is to use um a scenery asset to sort of get over that problem what you'll find is that in some cases these bridges have actually already got all the grass work around them um in in them so this is um it's unfortunately help help uh, not very helpful asset because it doesn't do that but if we look at the uh, bridges i don't know if any of these do <clears throat> that's a footbridge that's not going to help us that's not going to help us that's a pillar that's no, certainly not going to help us <sighs> that's a bit bigger and so as bridges go that uh, at an angle
But what you can get, I can't remember where it is now. It's one of those things that I looked earlier on and found it. And uh, is it in here? Yeah, it's the embankment. So you've got the, um, not embankment, that's for bushes. Down here. He says, having lost what he was looking for. Where is it? Not that one. Where did you go? You've run away. Is it in here? These are houses. I can't believe it being here. That's trees. Have a look on the chat. Or just hide the trees with gaps. Yep, there you go. There are lofts for bridges as well. But if you're using a fixed bridge like this one, then you need to use the filler thing that I can't find. It's typical, isn't it? You know, when I'm preparing these things, I find them no trouble at all. When it comes to actually... Uh, Here we go, earth embankment short. So if I bring earth embankment short in, which seems like a, oh my word, oh my really, really big word, what are you going to do with that type asset? Um, what you do is you bury it down, um, turn it round, put it in the right place, uh, and use it to fill some of the gap. Unfortunately, that's really not going to help me, I don't think. Normally what I'd do, it, it, or what root builders would do, is they'd custom build an asset that sort of covers that up. That's not going to help. <laughs> when I did it earlier on, it, it fit the gap beautifully. <laughs> well, let's have a look at the lofts and see if we can replace that bridge with something slightly less useless. Um, so let's um, go across from there to there. And we'll go to bridges. Um, and do a viaduct. What the heck? Oh, I didn't select the... Uh, I need to do the offset tool and I need viaduct loft. I don't remember how that, um, that's probably a bit excessive, but. You know what, for the purposes of what we're trying to show here, that would actually do. So let's uh, put this in about there to about there. Offset tool, change the offset tool to uh, two. And put the girder bridge half in there and in there. There you go. And then what we'll do is we'll take hold of those two. Just move them down a bit. There you go. Sometimes you just need to find another solution for your problem. There you go. Right. So we've got that all in. Uh, if we now go back to and just prove it all works. And we go to, is there a way to signal a crossover, um, Steam and Jam? Yes, you put a signal on before it and a link one at the other end. Right. I did delete the bridge intentionally. Oh, I didn't put the rope markers in, you're quite right. I dump a train load of molten steel into the gap. Now, all those wagons got derailed, unfortunately. I don't know why. 
that one in there. Oh, I've moved the track again. Put the track back. Destination marker in there. Destination marker around there. Put another destination marker around there. Let's go into the scenario editor. Should we have a different train? Uh, bowling lift lover, if you look on my YouTube channel, there is a tutorial of all about platforms. In fact, I think there are two tutorials about platforms. So let's uh, go to this is my figure eight. Look at that, isn't that good? It's lovely. That I'm really proud of that. <laughs> uh, what I haven't put down, of course, is a train. So let's uh, let's put a train down. Should we make it a Grange? Let's have some freight for a change. Fish train. Exciting. Uh, we'll put that on there. Right, now the fish train facing this way is going to do uh, destination five, seven, six, eight, five, seven six eight and then stop at five so it's five actually we got it wrong and put one from the other route here that will confuse it uh seven six next uh eight next if you're wondering why it's not showing any times or anything it's because i'm using these go via flags if i put stop at then you'd see timings um then we go back to destination five. Then we go to destination seven. Then we go to destination six. Back to destination eight. And then we go to stop at destination five. That's it. That's going to take it three minutes to run around twice. Let's see how it goes. Stephen Jam, thanks for posting that link. Which is out next week, twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, absolutely. The trees will be DLC. How do you set speed limits? Um, I'll do that in a minute. I'll just have a quick look at that. You do that with track markers. So it comes round. One thing you'll find is that AI trains can go up any hill. Because they are basically pulled along. They don't take, actually, they don't really take into account gradients. So uh, it doesn't matter how steep you make that. An AI train will get up. It'd be embarrassing if it now didn't. But. The other ones running around over there. I set up a consist one time with the 040 um, from Isle of Wight, Invincible, um, and it was haul I set up. I changed the couplings and I made it so that it was hauling a hundred fully loaded US coal wagons. <laughs> it could do anything. <laughs> Here he comes, coming round again, and there you go. That's uh, another kind of loop of traffic. It's the sort of thing, I mean, the reason I'm showing this is not because it's, you know, top class A1 route building quality, because clearly it isn't. But it's the sort of thing that you can have a bit of fun with, making routes and just putting AI trains on them and having them running around. It's, um, it sort of brings some of that model railway, um, you know, life to uh, life. To life.
So it should start slowing down and come to a stop just before here. As long as, you know, we're really, really lucky. I think it's been around twice now. Doesn't look like it's stopping. Has it been around twice? Or is this second time? I can't remember. Um, so, speed limits. Let's just go back out to the track. In fact, what I'm going to do is go to the scenario editor because that will reset the scenario and clean the world up. Uh, if we go back to the track now. See you later, GWR King class. Right, so speed limits. If we take our GWR King and it's going to start by running around that curve. So if we were to say, for example, put a speed limit around this curve um, from there to, say, there, over here. See, it's got a speed limit of 90 miles an hour. So if I were to set that to, say, 30, uh, and we set that to also 30, that's changed the speed limit. If you then want to put a speed limit asset in, um, I believe it's here, speed sign single this is the warning no i don't want the warning no i just want a normal speed sign that'll do speed sign and then we just link it up you see that now says 30 because it's been linked um, if you change the speed limit on the track, you'll need to relink it. Um, and then what we do is around here somewhere, if you press the space bar, you can see where these things are. See where the speed limit changes there. So actually what we want to do is just move that to there uh, and move that next to it. And then over here, where does it change back? It changes back just there. So let's put a speed sign in uh, there and we'll link it. No, nope, I did that wrong. Speed sign in there and link it there. So that's now got the 90 mile an hour spin. So that's how you've changed the speed. You've changed the speed limit. You can see the speed limits changed on the track properties because you can see the track properties and you can put speed limit signs down. So now if I run that, you should see the train now behaves differently. Um, Koplopa Mail is saying that um, so normally the speed limit's not shown on the HUD. What you will find is that depending on the route properties, you can um, you can change the route so that the speed limits on the track always show up regardless. Let's just wait and see what it does. And then we'll, that's it. I think we'll finish it there. That's close enough. I just wanted to show um, people have been having trouble figuring out how you do loops. If you set the limit to 1,000, the AI train goes faster. It'll go as fast as the train. So the train has a max, the low has a maximum speed. So it'll go the speed limit or the train's maximum speed. Sounds are lovely, aren't they? Oh my word, those sounds are nice. Slowing down.
around this corner, it'll come out of the limit. You'll see the speed sign on the left. Once the rear of the train goes through it, you should start speeding up again. It goes. That's how you do speed limits. Just wait for it to come past again. It's speeding up to 90 now, and as it comes up the hill, it'll start slowing down. No, I'm not going to do the pump car. I'll let you. I'll let you experiment with that. Should have put some super elevation on those curves. No. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should. Again, it slows down as it comes to that speed limit. Well, there you go folks um, that was kind of what I wanted to cover in that that's a basic tutorial on model rail simple model railway style layouts with uh, based on loops um, and how you can do them um, is that one still going yeah that one's still going so uh, you can set up um, loops you can um, set up the uh, AI trains to run along them uh, so you can do all sorts of uh, all sorts of good stuff on that. See, one of the things you could do is you could have branch lines. Maybe one of the times I'll do a tutorial, which is having um, like a two-car DMU and having two of them running either way through passing loops and things like that, because that's easy enough to set up. Right. Okay, folks. I hope that's been useful again, and um, I will. Uh, I'm going to start trying to do more tutorials ever every uh, every week now, and uh, we'll uh, we'll try and get through some of the, the questions that you're asking. If there's tutorials that you want to see, then um, make sure they get requested. On, just request them as a scenario, essentially. And uh, I will try and uh, try and get some of them done. Right, so it's on to scenario time.